Okay, so we have looked at different examples of mosaics. You have taken down the definitions for mosaic and grout, and now it's time to start practicing for the uh, watercolor mosaic. Okay, so you'll have a reference sheet that looks like this. So for our practice, we're going to be working on the bird, which means for the final, you cannot choose this one. Okay, so we're going to learn how to do it as a class. The other ones I want you guys to figure out on your own for your final. You can come up with your own idea, your own image, or you can use one of the images from the reference sheet, or you could use multiple images. For example, I could add some of these flowers into the background here if I wanted to, or I could add it here. I could do um, the birds on this background, adding leaves. You can change it up if you want to. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our free draw paper. We're going to fold it in half. Now this should have your notes on the back side of it. Okay, and then we're going to fold it in half the other way. So it doesn't matter which way you go first. So we're going to have four equal sections. Okay, four sections here. And we're going to start off in one. You can work vertically or horizontally on your final. But for this practice, I just want you to work horizontal. And the first thing that we're going to do is get a really, really light sketch of this bird. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just learning how to change the contour line drawing into a mosaic drawing. So I'm going to get a really light sketch line. I'm going to darken this up a little bit. I have a light sketch line, but I don't think you guys will be able to see that. Mine doesn't look exactly like the reference photo. That's okay. Now, the reason why we want these light is a lot of these lines are going to get erased. So we don't want to draw really heavy on this. Okay, so now to take a contour line drawing and turn it into mosaic, we need to divide it into glass pieces. But we also need to leave gaps in between for the grout. So you can see in the reference photo, if I look at the shapes up here, they leave just a tiny bit of space in between. And it looks like if I were to squish this bird together, all of those pieces would fit together like a puzzle, almost like a puzzle where we have gaps in between. So what we do is we use some of the outside lines, but I leave a gap in between that and my next shape. So I would eventually erase the line in between. The shapes don't have to be exactly like what you see in the reference, but if you get stuck on something, it's a good idea to look over there for reference. They don't all have to be the same shape either. Now, what we're trying to avoid is floating glass pieces. Let me see. Or it looks like this. We don't want to piece it together. We don't want floating pieces like that. Okay, so you're going to continue filling in your bird until you get all of the pieces filled in. And then once you do, we would erase the lines in between. Now, on our final, we're going to be using Sharpie to go over them. So what we'll do is we'll trace over these glass pieces with Sharpie and then just erase over the top of it. So that'll be a lot easier. Okay, so when you get done filling in your bird, it should look something like this. I have a couple different examples here. And then we're gonna work on the background. Okay, when you do the background, you can choose any shapes that you want as long as they're still drawn in the mosaic style. So here's a couple different examples of the background right here. I can do a simple brick pattern, leaving the gaps in between, or I can create more of a radial design pattern in the background. As long as you're leaving gaps in between and gaps in between the birds. Notice the pieces don't go right up next to the bird. Okay. The other thing that you're going to want to do is try to make your background different sizes and different shapes than your bird. If everything is the same shape, for example, right here, what this student did is they did all of these shapes in the background similar to the shapes on the inside of their bird. And then they just tried to outline the bird. That's not how a mosaic works. This is not what we want to do. We want to make it look different. We want to have gaps in between. So if I was doing a mosaic up here for my background, if I wanted to do the bricks right when I get up to the bird, I have to stop, go right up to the edge. Maybe I'll have my bricks go a little bit longer so it doesn't match up with the top. Leave a gap in between. Okay, so then the next one, I just continue filling it in. But again, leave a gap in between. Okay, so you guys can choose whatever you want for the background. But in order to get your final watercolor paper, you'll need to complete the bird with the background. So it'll look something like this. Okay, and then you're going to need to show me what you want to do for your final. 
So in one of your other four spaces that you created, so for example, I have my bird in my background over here. I'm gonna come over here. You're gonna show me what you wanna do for your final. So you're, this is your practice for your final. So if you're wanting to do a different animal or if you're wanting to use one of the reference photos from here and change it up a little bit, you're gonna show me what you wanna do here and then you can get your watercolor picture. Are you ready to go?